Hi everyone! This is a little chit chat Q&A video. Um, I did this once before. I've done this twice before. Uh, the first time it didn't save and then the second time I just didn't like the video. I was looking around, I was really busy and distracted and I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to sit down and do it all in one. Try to do it all in one. Um, but yeah, this is just a Q&A video about the new season florist, um, about me, about how I became a florist, um, what I do, how I got into it, how I started. Um, and yeah, there is eight questions. If you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at the questions. Um, so we'll get straight into it. Um, the first question is, how did you become a florist? How long have you been doing this for? So I was 14 or 15. I'm now 25 that's 10 years um so i've been doing it for 10 years i got into it because my mum was um going past the florist where i worked obviously before i started working there and there was an advert in the shop front window for saturday work uh so my mum was like i'll go in there see what they want see what they're expecting you might not get it because you've got no experience but there's no harm in trying so i went in I handed in my CV, I had a chat with the owner, and then that Saturday I started work. Um, and yeah, so I started off doing Saturdays all day, and then I started doing Wednesdays after uh, school slash, slash college for a couple of hours in the evening. Um, I would start, I started off just by cleaning, cleaning the buckets, changing the water, watering the plants taking orders and phone calls on Saturdays um, and then gradually started learning on the job um, and I think it sort of would have been about three, two or three years and then I started making stuff up for maybe less than that actually, it was a long time ago, um, I started making stuff up for the shop and stuff like that, that. so um, that's how I got into it, I wasn't actively looking for a job, uh, it was just something that my mum saw and she thought it'd be good for me for money management, pay my own phone bill at the time um, and just have some experience working and honestly it's the best decision I've ever made in my life. Um, yeah, so 10 years. Question two is, is your job stressful? Do you love your job? So I feel like every job has its stressful moments. Um, and it is a stressful job sometimes, but it is more rewarding for me uh, than it is stressful. Sometimes I can't control stuff and that's why I get stressed out. Occasionally get strikes at Calais. Flour might not be the best quality and stuff like that and that's all stuff out of my control. So that stresses me out. But genuinely speaking, the job itself doesn't stress me out. And I've also put on here that it is not just a job to me, it is a hobby and that's completely true. It's not just something that I would do, I'm just doing for a job. I do it because I love doing it. I do it because I love creating flower designs and being a part of all the events and seeing the happiness in people and sharing the the, the trends and the designs with other, with other florists and people in the industry. It's, it's amazing, I genuinely do love it. So yeah, I'd say it's more rewarding and happy than it is stressful. Um, I try not to get stressed out, so, but as I said, every job is stressful. There's always things that come up and external factors that we can't control that can stress us out, so yeah. Um, do you work alone? I get this quite often because I don't really show a lot of myself on my social media accounts, um, but I do, me, I am the owner of the New Season Florist on paper. Um, I'm the face of the new season and I'm the only designer that I have but behind the scenes, the delivering, the accounting, the marketing, the promotion, the finding trends and all of that kind of stuff is completely down to my family. Um, I'm very very lucky in that sense that I've got a family that care so much about my work and, uh, and are so willing to help and support me childcare as well, my partner helps me a, a lot as well, um, so yeah, like I mean, I'd, uh, I'd like to say no, I don't work alone, but I am the sole, I don't want to say founder because it's such a cliche thing to say, I didn't found, I didn't find floristry, floristry's been around since I was back in the day, but um, I am the owner of the new season florist on paper. Um, the next question is, 
What is the, your favorite part of your job? My favorite part of my job is the creating of the bouquets and the tributes and the designs and stuff like that. Being a part of the, of the whole process is also something that I thoroughly enjoy. So meeting, or not meeting, because obviously I'm not meeting customers at the moment, but getting in touch with customers, them ordering it. I love the ordering process because they get to pick the colors, they get to pick all of that sort of personalized stuff and then the card message and all that sort of stuff, I love. Then I get to, meet, to see the ending of it which is the delivering of the bouquet and again like I've just said I get to see the happiness I get to see the joy I get to see the excitement and the surprise that people don't know they're getting a bouquet um, that's definitely my favorite part of it um, jointly with the creating of it because I love creating bespoke rare one-of-a-kind pieces that people absolutely love I and that's it that goes hand in hand I think they're both as important as each other to me um, being my own boss is something I also very, I'm very, very thankful for and I obviously love. Yeah, it's just seeing, seeing the happiness and the joy that other people get from receiving a gift is, is amazing. It's something that is, is very inspiring and it's a privilege to see. Um, the next question is, what would you do if you wasn't doing this? What did you want to do when you was younger? So I wanted a restaurant that would do like free, free from restaurants. So nut free, gluten free, dairy free, all of that kind of stuff. I just had, um, yeah, dreams of having a, being a restaurant owner. Uh, number six is, what is it like being a working mum? It is, uh, it's a privilege. It's amazing being able to work from home and working with my son and having him be involved in it and and seeing that there is routine and there's structure to to life to life um being able to have him involved and 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 love it too like it wasn't ever i didn't push it on him i never pushed it on him but he sort of understood that mummy was at work and mummy makes flowers and and he'd always come over and and pick up a flower and smell it and give it to me to put in a bouquet or whatever it was I was doing. Um, and also the community that comes with being a working mum is absolutely amazing. I've made some amazing, precious friends um, that all understand life can be a little bit up and down and running a business and being a mum is stressful and you get tired and... and sometimes you're less busy than what you were and you panic and you worry and there's that side of being a of being a working mum but you also have a community of women that appreciate it and understand it but just knowing that you're not alone in it and that other people have done it before you and they're still doing it and they're still going just having that push just having that extra push and inspiration like I love seeing other inspiring people and business owners especially women especially working mums what is your mission statement slash future plans now this is something I think I'm going to film separately in in a video and give more detail on it because I love diversification I love expanding it was always in my plans to go into different avenues my mission statement is to encourage creativity at, in in homes because especially in family environments because during lockdown especially i've always done it anyway but during lockdown especially not being able to go out and see family and have people round to visit and go and see my mom and my grandparents and stuff like that we i was doing a lot of stuff at home with my son and it was baking and it was making uh, sock puppets and stuff like this, just being creative at home and making the most of what we had here because I still wasn't going out because we were, we were isolating and stuff like that. So it was just being creative with what you have at home and it being affordable. And I think people think that to be creative, you have to spend a lot of money and you fully don't. You, you really don't. That's the reality of it and this is why i love doing the pound lounge halls and the home bargain halls because you don't have to spend a tremendous amount of money a massive amount of money to be crafty at home um 
but yeah i just i love encouraging creativity at home and this is why going on to the second part of the question future plans this is why i'm heading more towards the diy kits and the tutorials on youtube and sharing tips and advice for cut flower and plants and seasonal flowers and stuff like this because it's so important for me to to share the knowledge that i have and this is another video that i'm gonna do because in the industry i'm in it's very dog eat dog and people don't like sharing their knowledge and i think it's so important as a creator of this sort of in this industry i think it's so important and i'm so passionate about sharing what i know because i just think so many people can benefit from it and i and it's not something that is sa is sacred I don't, i'm not going to be like no i'm not telling you stuff i'm all for sharing and i'm all for teaching and and learning myself and following trends and setting trends and having my own spin on stuff you know and it and it's that's just something that i feel passionate about i think so many people can learn from having flowers and plants in their homes and bringing outdoors in it can bring new energy into the home and craft alone for argument's sake the pumpkin that i've the, uh, the floral pumpkin that i posted it's such a fun thing to do with, with as a family but it's something i'm so passionate about and i really hope moving forward that i can share my knowledge and people use it to be creative at home that is my main goal as it stands at the moment um yeah i got a little bit passionate there got a little bit um deep there but honestly it's just something that i think more people need to be doing it's not about competition it's about collaboration and it's about reaching out to people in your industry who are just as skilled or know just as much as you and and learning from them and teaching and and just expanding the industry because it's such a tough one at the minute especially in events weddings and all that sort of stuff because it's not as big as what it once was and floristry isn't as big as it once was i just think to build the industry and to give it life and and let it live and breathe we just have to support one another and stop thinking that this is this is competitive and that's why i said in my last video i'm not I'm, I'm not competitive i am my own creator i'm my own person and i i learn still 10 years in i learn and i teach and i love connecting and communicating and it shouldn't be about competition because every single creator is different you, I can't make the same bouquet twice. I cannot do it. I will make it will be the same colours and flowers and shape and style, but it will never be mirrored. I can never duplicate a bouquet because that just isn't what the industry is about. It's not what it's about. It's about being bespoke and making one of a kind rare things. It's not about making everything look exactly the same. And there's a lot to it, so I think i think it'd be beneficial to make a whole video on the actual industry because there's not enough information out there about it um so maybe that'll be next um and the last question is what is the most common thing that's said to you as a florist now this one made me chuckle so hard because i thought you know what let me actually go through my dms past orders interactions i've ever had and stuff like that and see what is most what is the most common thing now don't get me wrong there were so many nice ones like your work's amazing oh my god that's incredible and all this sort of stuff but i thought you don't want to hear this you want to hear the funny stuff you want to hear the juicy stuff right i've got some juicy stuff for you the most and i've written this down quoted and i've done tallies next to it to see how many and this these were the top two most common things funniest things ever said to me the first one is oh i didn't think it'd be that expensive or i just wanted a small or cheaper bunch and this is another thing that i want to do a video on because it people i don't know what people think florists do i don't know if we are compared to supermarkets i don't know if we are looked at as being expensive and all this sort of stuff but there's so much that goes into florists choices and bouquets and designs and event styling that 
people, I don't think people appreciate, and this is again why I want to get into more filming of sort of like the event styling and how long it takes and what goes into it and in, and it's everything that everyone has to consider is getting up at wholesalers i don't know if you know this fun fact of the day wholesalers open at five o'clock in the morning and close at 11 or 12 o'clock did you know that we don't work on normal clocks we don't work on nine till five five days a week we work from three or four o'clock in the morning until five or six o'clock at night even later than that sometimes we don't work on normal basic high street shops nine till five doesn't happen so you have to take all of this into consideration getting up that early going to the wholesale getting the stuff from auction getting the stuff that's fresh and nice and the best looking flower there and then bringing it home so you've already got to take into account that journey in the morning because it isn't just a quick outward journey florists go hunting like we go looking we are actively seeking out the best quality the best looking the best color flower so you have to take that into account before any of the creating is actually done. Then we go to our workshop shops, wherever it is, homes, whatever it is we're doing, and we make the bouquet up. And like I just said, you don't, we're not machines. We don't sit and make a hundred bouquets in an hour. It takes time to make these bespoke bouquets and it takes practice and understanding the flowers and the way the bouquets are meant to look. So you have to take that into account secondly and then thirdly it's the it's the it's the transition from being at bit having the bouquet physically there to delivering it to the service that it's delivered with being on time to the right address to the right person if the person's not home where do you then go you have to wait there's so much i feel like the only way i can make people understand this is if i do a day in the life with because and even then, it won't, it won't do it justice because it, that would only be one day of the week. Maybe I should do like a year in the life and just vlog a whole year. But there's so much that needs to be taken into consideration if you're comparing florists to supermarkets. And because people can go to supermarkets and pick up a bunch of flowers for X amount of money and it's however much cheaper than a florist, I think people think, oh, why are florists not that cheap then? There's a lot of craft that goes into it. And I think I might do another video. I've just given myself like free video ideas in this. But I hope you like these chit chat videos because I genuinely do love sitting here answering these questions and letting, getting, letting people know me because I don't post me anywhere on social media. I've only recently started doing it. It's made me feel a little bit uncomfortable, I won't lie. But it's something I'm learning to do and i'm genuinely enjoying it and i'm actually getting a good reaction from it so yeah i think these chit chat videos could be beneficial to 